It's planting day, first week of May. I know a lot of you have already got your stuff in the ground, but because of our frosts here, we can't get stuff in the ground until May. I take that back. About a month ago, we planted some stuff over there in that first bed, some lettuce and you know greens, stuff like that, and they're just now coming up, but that's about a month later. You gotta let the soil warm up enough to, uh, to germinate. But Robert's here pulling out roots from last year's mint explosion. And, uh, you know, this stuff's impossible to get rid of, it seems like, once you plant it. But she's going to do her best. So we can, because we don't, we don't really use mint for anything. But it's tough. And it stays green and it makes it, makes you feel like you're able to grow something. <laughs> so... But the other beds, I've got carrots there that are just starting to come up. I'll show you. A couple little, couple little baby carrots starting to come up in this row. But some more will be coming up soon. And uh, then, like I said, greens in this one. Oh, I think we got greens and spinach and different kinds of lettuce and stuff like that in here. It's starting to come up. That's good. But it's the first week of May, so we, we've got to get some other things in the ground here now that the frost is done, and uh, or at least claims to be done. Here, and there, there go the dogs. Um, here, we've got a little blueberry bush that kind of survived. I don't know if it survived the winter, but we'll find out. So I got a bunch of pine needles to pile over that for acid. And... Uh, then we've got we've got our very own uh, uh, garden destroyers here. They love to play in this soft, damp stuff, and uh, so they they have a a way of uh, damaging stuff. But I think we've got some cattle panel we can lay over these to keep them out, that kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do while she does this. Tiller, I need the tiller. And those of you who are familiar with Native American, Native American uh, historical, Native American gardening practices will know about what they call the three sisters. The three sisters are corn, beans, and squash. And squash is a type of melon. I can't stand squash. I, I don't eat it, but we may plant some anyway for robber's sake, but... Um, this area here, right near the well, and behind the trailer, and this area, I'm going to come out here with a tiller, till this up. I may lay a little bit of cover over it, but not much. And then my goal is to plant rows of corn. I'm going to plant bush beans, green beans. And then also interspersed in here, I'm going to plant pumpkin and watermelon. And so this will be our area for that. It'll, be, it'll probably be pretty crowded in here if the corn comes up. If not, at least we'll have the melons and hopefully the green beans. So, yeah. So that's the plan, right, Reba? Reba, what's the plan? Are you going to help? Hey, are you going to help? Roscoe? I guess you guys will... Well, you'll supervise. I get it. All right. Okay. So as you can see, it only takes a few minutes in this really soft sand. It's very soft. Um, and uh, <clears throat> now it's almost completely sand. Uh, there's not much organic material in it. No clay. There's just some very small <clears throat> pebbles in it. But uh, don't be fooled because this stuff will grow. Uh, a lot of things. This damp stuff, if you squeeze it, it'll hold together for a moment, but it's really soft stuff. Um, that stuff just pours right through your fingers when it's dry. 
but uh yeah so um, i don't know if you can see down there that farmer's circle out there that growing circle that farm crop circle <clears throat> there's another one there that's sort of brown there is something just now coming up in it but they're growing uh barley and alfalfa out here um and probably barley and alfalfa because they planted potatoes in here last year so they rotate their crops anyway as you can see stuff's growing in them other things that they grow out here are carrots and other root vegetables um, that enjoy an early season um, all kinds of brassicas, uh, squash, um, that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, so it'll grow it. It'll grow it. If it gets enough water, it'll grow it. But, uh, I, I may top the soil with a little something just to hold the water in because it's so dry and windy here that, you know, if you don't do that, especially with corn, it requires so much water, you might wind up being uh, you might have wind up having to water three times a day to keep it alive i'm pulling up a fair bit of this this is and you can see some more right here um this is yucca root or agave it grows all over out here you can see there's some right there it grows naturally and our land is covered with it and uh it's edible the seeds are edible the flowers are edible the root is edible. In fact, these days, you'll find it in a fine restaurant. Uh, back east, they like to call it yucca with one C. Out here in the west, they just call it yucca. But finer restaurants will serve it as a staple instead of potatoes or something like that. There's really nothing fancy about it, you know. It's about as fancy as tapioca is, and you know what we use that for around here. So, um, <clears throat> But it is edible, and it's got nutrition. It's a, it'll make a decent staple crop um and someday we'll have to pull some of this and cook it up uh for you guys in a video we haven't tried that yet but we need to we need to get on that so anyway and the dogs are having fun again this is their life that's pretty much what they do <laughs> and chase rabbits and chase elk <laughs> bye <laughs> anyway we'll get this done we'll start planting Walking by here, and look what I see, a little Brussels sprout coming up. Okay, so a little bit about planting the three sisters. Native Americans planted them, always, always, you know, planted them. But in different parts of the country, they planted them differently. In the Northeast, the Iroquois, or Iroquois, however you say it, would make a large mound and raise it up and they would plant all three in that mound. The idea being there that the, uh, the rains are so heavy in that region that unless you mounded it up, you wouldn't get good drainage and they'd be waterlogged. Um, in you know, the Southwest near where we are, people like the Hopi would plant them, but they would plant them in different areas. So you'd have their beans in one area, their squash in one area and their corn in another. And they would spread them out. Um, that's because rainfall was pretty scarce uh, in that area of the country. And so you wanted to spread them out so that there wasn't too much competition among the plants for available uh, rainwater, you know, as it soaked into the ground. If you plant them too close together, then they, you know, none of them get enough rain. Um, and uh, in, you know, say the, the Midwest, and coming this way a little bit they would plant them together but not in mounds um so i think that's what i want to try here and in fact i think i'm going to make some i'm going to make some rows you know that are that have low spots and high spots and i'm going to plant the corn in the low part of the row because they're the most water needy uh of the three plants i think and then i will plant the green beans and the squash on the high parts of the rows um, and then just sort of let them grow together and see what we get. It's not perfect but it's good enough uh, and good enough brings me to uh, a point that I'd like to make and that is this soil looks very sterile but it will grow stuff. How do I know? Because it's already growing stuff. Uh, there are grasses that grow out here 
and uh, there's that yucca that grows out here there is greasewood and rabbit brush and golden rods and all kinds of things that grow out here in it so so I know it will grow something if you're sitting on the fence because you don't want to plant a garden and it's not just you know that you're lazy <laughs> laziness is real folks <laughs> but uh if if you're if you're saying that well my soil won't grow anything because it hasn't been amended it hasn't been well you're probably wrong just about any soil and this is almost 100 percent sand uh as you can see with some little pebbles uh, and stuff in it but this will grow stuff i know that also because we're uh, farmers are already growing stuff out here in it so um my suggestion you don't even need to you don't even need to till up an area like this or work it dig a hole bust up the soil around it and throw some seeds in it and see what you get uh it's that simple growing something is that simple um, all you need to do is throw some seeds in the ground and see if they'll grow then if you want to get all fancy and till and level and you know make fancy rows and plant a pretty garden you can do that but what the heck what does it cost you 10 minutes of your time to go out in your backyard dig a hole throw a couple of seeds of anything in it and see what you get and i think you'll be amazed at the results so we'll use a little bit of rain water to do some watering we don't have a lot right now this was full from snow melt we need to get a proper tote out here and collect more the state restricts how much uh, rainwater we can keep <clears throat> and so we have to be you know careful with it but uh, as you can see dry climate see the blowing sand <laughs> this is nearly full we haven't used that much but many mornings when there's not a big wind we'll get you know some dew that comes off the roof and just drips in here and uh, helps keep things helps keep the level up a little bit so it's nice but uh, let's get some things water with the rainwater too hey everyone it's robert and Egypt. Like that. So we we just got finished planting three apple trees. We had to put them 20 feet apart and uh, they are bare root apple trees. The post office got them in May 12th. Nobody ever sent us a notice that they were there and when we got back from our trip Egypt contacted the Fedco tree place and they said oh they were delivered May 12th and we're sending them back and they're going to be sent back on May 28th. So they were sitting in the post office for almost two, <laughs> two weeks. Yeah. And so I beat it just in time at the post office and picked them up. And yesterday they have to sit out for 24 hours. And today we planted. What kind did you get, Robert? What kind? I don't apple trees. This first one is a variety called Cherry Field. And as you can see, they're pretty, they're pretty skimpy. They're small. They're bare root starters. This one we planted over here by the chickens. And it's called, this one is a black Oxford. This one is a Baldwin. And we got these trees from Fedco. We ordered them from Fedco. I've had good success with their seed but I've never ordered their trees before, so we'll see how this goes. But when we got it, this was broken. And I don't know, we'll see. You like my hat from Peru? It's all leather. It's got a chin strap to hold up in this wind for southwest, high southwest winds, and we'll see how well it holds up in this dry climate. But uh, we chose these three trees based upon several criteria. We wanted something that we could make cider or apple jack with. We wanted something that would store well. We wanted something that we could also eat, you know, it was good for fresh eating, and something that would make good pies. And they were out of Granny Smith uh, trees, so we went with these because they, uh, they say they're all good for pie making and other things, I guess other kinds of baking. So that's why I chose them, but we'll see how they hold up in this climate. 
This climate's not exactly made for apple trees. You may remember this spot where we planted the three sisters. I mean three sisters. We planted corn, pumpkins, and watermelon. Uh, and beans. Uh, pole beans. Not pole beans. Bush beans. And uh, so uh, this is how it's coming along. It's been over three weeks now since we planted. And the corn is coming up in these low rows. And the pumpkins... Uh, are coming pumpkins and watermelon are coming up just a few and the beans over there are starting to come up can't really see them here's here a couple we're watering right now so everything's getting wet but uh so now again this was planted just in sand we did nothing to amend the soil we added no fertilizer we've done nothing we've added no special uh compost tea or water or anything like that it's just Plain old well water and the sand that they're growing in. The key will be, since this is sand, is keeping this corn, you know, well watered. It's live and it ain't no chive. Look at that chive. Blooming out big time. And there's robber in bloom. In the bloom of her off-grid lessness i don't know what i planted and i can't find the drawing oh well we'll figure it out we planted things to eat <laughs> that's what we planted nothing no they're green there's like see slight bit of green there see a slight bit of green there but they're not doing anything yet let's hope they catch on they sat in that box for three weeks, over two weeks at the post office, and however many days while in shipment before we found out they were here. So, let's see about this one. How are you doing? Again, buds are there, a little fuzzy, and I think they just need a little bit more time and acclimation. The greens are coming up nicely. And peas are doing nicely. They're starting out nicely. Peas are sort of taking off. Carrots. Sort of how they are. We need to get in there and thin those out. But, I mean, they're coming up very slowly. They've been in there for month and a half at least mm -hmm. and i've forgotten what this is uh, spinach and kale spinach and kale okay. the uh, tumbleweeds are starting to come up <laughs> it is third going on third week of june and uh so this is our garden i know doesn't look like much does it but you have to keep in mind we have about a 90 day growing season here at this elevation and uh you know what we the the soil doesn't really get warmed up until mid-may late may so all this is new it was planted a long long time ago but it's just now coming up and slowly um looks like we got some collards and some spinach I don't know what she planted there. Some more kind of green peas and mixed greens of all kinds. Uh, better eat those up or give some to the chickens. Carrots and parsnips here. We've not watered these. We're gonna, now that they're up, we're taking to watering them only uh, once a week so that their roots will chase the moisture down in the ground and produce bigger carrots. And we've got some other stuff here. Broccoli raw, um, which is starting to bolt, which means I better eat it. Hmm. Not bad. Um, so yeah, ooh, it's nice and sweet. So I'll pick a bunch of that and eat it. Um, tomatoes aren't doing much. Peppers aren't doing much. However, 
it's been about a month now since we planted the trees and they're starting to come out which is nice we got three apple trees you may remember that we planted three sisters corns beans and squash or watermelon cantaloupe that kind of stuff and we planted them over here and we planted them straight into sand with no amendment or anything it's been almost six weeks i think and this is where it's at so the corn is coming up now i did cheat when the corn was first coming up it was starting to act a little peaked so i sprinkled some miracle grow in the rows there and that has helped and we water it every other day plenty of water um, I think that's a watermelon that's just starting to come up. There's another one, another one, another one. And then I had, as I recall, either melons, it was muskmelons, I think. There's one, but again, they're not doing so hot. Um, we planted several rows of beans here. And some critter is coming out here, I don't know if you can see that, and, uh, and eating them. So they can't even get a start because their tops, well, there's one that survived, <laughs> but their tops are being eaten off by some critter. We know not what. So um, let the sprinkler go on this for a while. Get it nice and wet. And, uh, since it's later in the day and we'll lose solar energy here pretty soon, which pumps our, which pumps our water. Uh, I may give it another watering in the morning. So, that's the corn. We'll see if it survives.